Daniel, so Saul, Michael, Axel, and Catherine. I hope I did not forget anyone. <laughs> well, let's just give them a big hand. Of course, that's not the end of the program. That's just the end of the of the workshop, and I'm sure there continue to be interesting discussions. Okay, so uh, so my talk, uh, the title of my talk is BPS Modularity on Calabria Three Falls, and it will be an overview of some uh, recent works which I did over the last few years with several people. Uh, common denominator is uh, is this, uh, uh, Say Alexandrov. But also some uh, uh, also works with the Jan Manshot and some very good uh, postdocs, uh, in, including uh, Banerjee and and uh, Neva. Uh, so Sivashish Banerjee, who uh, was a postdoc in in Bonn and is now moving to IHS in Paris, and Neva Gadam was in Utrecht and on his way to to ICTS. And if I have time, I will talk about some ongoing work uh, with uh, also uh, Soela Facebook. Uh, uh, Mathematician from Imperial College, uh, average claim, and uh, Thorsten Schimanek, who's uh, uh, a new postdoc in, uh, in, in Paris. So, right before starting, I should mention that uh, this uh, modularity on Calabria three folds is, is distinct, as far as we understand, from the modularity that you might have heard about in talks by uh, Xenia and Philip a couple of weeks ago, uh, having to do with the uh, with the periods at special points in the modality space of Calabria three folds and connections to counting uh, of points over finite fields. This would be a different kind of modularity related instead to the counting of VPS states. So I'll start with some uh, uh, background and, 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 and motivation. So talking about the bridges between number theory and, and, uh, and, uh, and string theory, as you well know, there are many fruit fruitful connections have arose. Uh, from uh, trying to understand uh, non perturbative effects as well as solitonic states in uh, string, uh, string theory vacua with extended supersymmetry. And the simplest case of that connection arises in type two strings compactified on the simplest manifold of all, the torus TD, in which case this, uh, the manifest SLDZ symmetry corresponding to global deformorphisms of torus gets enhanced to uh, so-called T-duality in string theory, in perturbative string theory, which is an uh, uh, orthogonal group for some uh, uh, lattice of signature DD. And then even further to U-duality, uh, that is the exceptional group ED plus one in, in, in that case. And that gives a very strong constraint, uh, both on the, uh, uh, on, on the uh, 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 low energy effective action, the coefficients of higher derivative interactions, as well as on the spectrum of, of the states. So those consist of some, uh, as we heard from Guillaume, some D brains, the Schwartz five brains, uh, kind of monopoles, which are wrapped in, on some subtori uh, of these torus, as well as bound states uh, thereof. And in fact, there is a close connection between uh, uh, high derivative interactions or low energy effective action on the spectrum, since uh, you have, when you have those states in dimension D, consider the theory further reduced on the torus. On the circle, they induce some instant corrections in lower dimension. And in fact, you can think of the, the, the breaking of the symmetry from the continuous uh, uh, Lie group to the hermetic subgroup as the effect of this uh, of instant corrections uh, induced by these very uh, same objects. So in the, in, the, in the maximal supersymmetric case, the story is very well understood and has uh, uh, connections to number theory, but to some rather simple uh, uh, modular forms. In that case, just the weakly holomorphic uh, modular forms for SL2Z and congruent subgroups. Specific, specifically, if you consider uh, type two strings on, 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 a, on a six torus and count BPS states in four dimensions, you can show that there are uh, uh, given by Fourier coefficients of this particular uh, uh, weak modular form. Of course, they grow exponentially fast in a way which you can uh, very easily uh, control from, uh, uh, from the Radermara formula. So the index omega here, which I denote by omega of gamma in the rest of the talk, is a, is a function of the charge. But the number of states for a given charge only depends on the simple uh, quartic invariant uh, that you make out of, of the charges. So this is the quartic invariant of E7. And, and, and you can reproduce the, the growth predicted by the beckenstein hawking uh, entropy formula, E, e to the, to the uh, uh, some, uh, square root of n, which is the, uh, the 
the Bekenstein, uh, what, what uh, Hawking predicted. Okay, you can also read off these indices from these non perturbative corrections to certain couplings in the low energy effective action, as we, those the same ones that were discussed in Daniele's talk this morning. Um, and from the mathematical point of view, well, there are there is connections to uh, analytic number theory in a in kind of uh, superficial way, but also this these same indices can be uh, uh, defined uh, in terms of the um, the, the derived category of current sheaves uh, on uh, living on on this uh, internal space. So that's the proper mathematical formulation for understanding uh, D-brain bound states, and. Well, it's actually a reduced version of the. So you have, there are Donaldson Thomas invariants uh, associated for any choice of charge vector that you can define and in some cases compute. And this was actually done a few years ago by, in work by Brian or by Dick Panari Pandey, where they could reproduce these uh, numbers. So I, well, I think the, the full uh, origin of the of modularity and invariants on the E7Z was not, I mean, still remains mysterious. So that's the maximal uh, supersymmetric case. And now I want to go down in supersymmetry uh, down to n equals to two. I won't take you through n equals to six and n equals to five, just refer to Guillaume's talk for n equals to six. But uh, in, uh, so in n equal to four supersymmetry, which is what you get when you compactify on a special kind of Calabi-R threefold, which is the product of a Calabi-R twofold, also known as K3 and uh, elliptic curve. In that case, again, we have this enhancement of symmetries from the manifest geometric symmetries that you can see on the homology lattice of K3 and the diffeomorphisms of the T2 to a, to a larger, larger group. Uh, and uh, as is well known, the, so the index counting quadruple VPS states in this, uh, in this setup is again given by Fourier coefficient of some modular object, but now it's a meromorphic Ziegel modular form. So, Ziegel here means SP4Z, genus two, uh, uh, Ziegel modular form. Um, so this uh, being meromorphic, the, the Fourier coefficients actually depend on a choice of integration contour. And uh, as you change the contour, those, those uh, coefficients will jump. And that is correlated with the fact that the, the index omega of gamma counting such states actually depends on the, on the moduli Z of, of of this internal space. And the, the choice of contour is correlated in Z, such as you cross these poles, the index jumps exactly in the way predicted by the appearance or, uh, or disappearance of uh, two-centered bound states. So if you are, uh, there is one particular chamber you can choose where actually these two-centered bound states will, will, will not contribute. And as in the very beautiful work of Fatish Dabokar, Sami Moti, and, and Don Zaye, they, they showed that, so if you, if you extract the Fourier coefficients for in this particular chamber, then what you get are no longer Fourier coefficients of, uh, of modular forms, but mock modular forms. So they have some anomalous transformation under SL2Z, but still you can extract their exponential growth by finding their modular completion and then applying the, the, circle, the circle method. And check again the, the growth uh, matches the expectation from Baker and Hawking, although the subleading uh, corrections are, are much more involved than in the mod strictly modular case and gives rise to interesting uh, physical questions. And there's again this other perspective where you look at uh, corrections to uh, certain couplings in the low energy effective action. In this case, it will be some four boson, uh, some four gauge boson coupling rather than four graviton. Uh, and so we did. Uh, we played this game with uh, with Guillaume and uh, Charles Cosniero in, uh, in in a few years back, and found that exactly the same Ziegel modular form, which controls the spectrum, also enters in enters in these uh, couplings in the form of some genus two theta lift. So that's uh, that's kind of the automorphic uh, uh, side of the story. And from the geometric side, there's also some rigorous computations of reduced Donaldson Thomas invariants associated to K3 cross T2. Uh, and then again, uh, well, uh, 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 striking confirmations of this, uh, of this physical prediction, though it's not yet at the level where uh, mathematicians can compute DT invariants for all possible charges and check, check agreement. So now we are getting to Calabi R3 folds 
which is really the topic of my of my talk. And here the, the automorphicity uh, it becomes much less uh, much, much less uh, powerful. On the other hand, the setup is much richer. So there's not just a single K3, but there is, as you know, a huge uh, a huge number of uh, Calabria three folds that you can uh, construct uh, related by some uh, complicated geometric uh, transitions. And the modelized space in that case is no longer a symmetric space. There are quantum corrections coming from uh, worksheet in sentence and so on. So you lose this uh, large uh, uh, reductive group symmetries, but there's, there's still some re remainder, uh, small remainder of them. So one of them is in fact, the, the monodromy group of the, Calab the family of Calabria threefolds that you're considering. So I should have said the moduli space consists of scalar moduli, complex structure moduli, and you can perform uh, various, uh, you consider monodromies as you circle around uh, singularities. So this would be some subgroup of the symplectic group in, uh, on the even cohomology lattice or even homology lattice on the odd homology lattice. So that's just an abelian, uh, an ab well, sorry, let's say, yeah, an analog of, uh, 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 well, okay, let me not say more than that. Uh, but as you reduce, so this is what you get when you are on start from uh, 10 dimensions on compactifier in the Calabria threefold. But it's actually uh, very useful to think at what happens when you further reduce on the circle. In that case, uh, this, uh, you can think of type 2a string theory on the circle times Calabria. As this element in the dimensional theory called n theory on the, on the two torus. And then you discover that the, there has to be an additional symmetry SL2Z co uh, constraining uh, the, the, uh, the action, as well as, of course, the previous uh, monodromy group that you had in four dimensions. And some additional uh, Heisenberg group, which keeps track of large gauge transformations. And uh, which actually won't be uh, playing much of a role in my stories, uh, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, ignore it for most of the time. But this SL2 factor here is where you will get uh, the modularity constraints from. So there's a much uh, richer uh, set of Calabria three folds you can consider, but also the, the kind of bound states uh, that arises is much richer compared to higher supersymmetry. And the main fact is, is that uh, these bound states can involve an arbitrary number of constituents, not just two have BPS states as we had in n equals to four story. And that leads to a very uh, complicated dependence of the index uh, on, the, on, this, uh, on this scalar moduli. So a little complicated chamber structure, which makes it rather challenging to, to compute this uh, at, at, any, at any point. Well, actually, so the jumps across the walls are, are governed by a, a universal uh, wall crossing formula, which was first uh, proven in the context in the context of Dirac categories or donaldson thomas theory by Conservi Zalberman. So in principle, you know how to go from one chamber to the other, but it's a rather uh, involved process. So the goal of my talk then is, uh, or the question I want to, to uh, ask is, can we determine uh, this uh, indices exactly for some range of, well, Calabria threefold first, and then some charge gamma and some suitable uh, choice of the, of the model. So here's the uh, outline of the rest of, of, my, of my talk. So the, the key uh, constraint will, will be uh, using uh, modularity from this GL to SL2Z. So I'll start by describing some uh, general constraints coming from that. And then I'll apply it to uh, some special examples of Calabria three folds, depending how much time I have. I will uh, discuss a, uh, a non-compact local Calabria three folds, which are simple example of which is the, uh, the canonical bundle over some uh, complex uh, final surface. In that case, we have connections to, uh, uh, between donaldson thomas invariants and so-called waffa witten invariants of the surface. And uh, in the last part, I'll consider some examples of one modulus compact Calabria three, such as the Quintic, where we can try to use this modularity to, to extract uh, exact uh, detail bonds. So that's, uh, that's the plan. And unless there are questions, I'll, uh, I will review the, uh, now what are those modular constraints coming from the study of, uh, uh, constraint of, of uh, requiring this action of SL2Z on, on the modular space. 
So that's actually a long, uh, a long story, and I'll just give you the what the out uh, upshot is. We starting and uh, investing in this uh, probably more than ten years ago with the Sega Alexandrov uh, and, and Stefan van Dora, and, and then many works in uh, with various authors. There was also some previous work by Stefan van Dora and collaborators. So I'll just give you what the executive summary of that. So on the Calabria threefold in type 2A, the, uh, the, the charge vector is valued in the uh, even homology lattice. So it can have support either on points, that's last entries, or on curves, or on divisors, or on the full uh, Calabria itself. Those are the D0, D2, D4, and D6, uh, D6 charges. So if you just have D0 brains, the answer is actually totally universal, independent of which Calabria you take. And uh, so requiring that this modelized space has an isometric action of SL2Z allows you to, to, uh, uh, to show that for ND0 brains, the index will just be uh, proportional to the order number of the Calabria threefold, independent of the number of, of D0 brains itself. That's actually, this independence on N is actually necessary such that you can think of these D0 brains and D0 brains as Kaluza Klein states of some extra dimension. So it's very uh, well understood physically, but also uh, on, on, uh, on sound uh, mathematical ground. Now let's switch on some uh, D2 brain charge, meaning we take a, a charge vector supported on endpoints on some curve of, uh, of class, which I denote by QA. So we can think of QA as being some electric charge for these zero brains. Then, uh, so you, you, what you obtain is that the DT invariance counting these bound states is actually equal to the genus zero Gopakuma Bafa invariant, which initially arose in a totally different uh, problem, which was to count Wurtschild instantons. So as duality relates Wurtschild instantons to D1 string instantons, and as a consequence, uh, Gopakuma Vafa invariance to, uh, to, DT, to DT invariance. And then again, this is uh, independent of the number of, of D0 brains that you are uh, adding on, on, onto it. And those Gopakuma Vafa uh, invariants can be uh, computed. Well, this is the generous, generous zero ones. And of course, they are famously computable using mirror symmetry. Now, the main case of interest in my talk will be uh, when, when you add uh, some D4 brain charge. Uh, so you consider uh, some ample, so uh, some divisor, some four cycle in the, inside the Calabria, and the story is simplest if the D4 brain charge it corresponds to a, a, an ample divisor, in particular an irreducible four cycle. And well, the best way to uh, to state the modularity constraint is to uh, uh, construct a generating series of those uh, of those numbers. So you fix the D4 brain and D2 brain charge, and you let the, end, the D0 brain charge uh, be arbitrary with some power of Q uh, in, in this way. Um, and the statement that comes out of this analysis is that this should be a vector valued, uh, weakly holomorphic modular form of a given weight, which just depends on the, on bit, the bit number of the Calabria and some uh, prescribed multiplier system, which I will uh, not uh, dwell on. Now, uh, I'll give some further details on that, but I want to draw your attention to this notation omega star of gamma here. So this is the so-called attractor index, uh, where you correlate the choice of moduli with the, uh, with the charge uh, of the state uh, itself. So more specifically, this is the index in the so-called large volume attractor chamber that is the, uh, the, the chamber that you would get by uh, computing the, so the moduli at the center of a, of a black hole with such charges. There's this, uh, as you may be familiar with, at least physicists should be familiar with this phenomen attractor phenomenon where the, uh, where the moduli at the center of a spherical black holes are determined in terms of the, of the charges at infinity. However, you rescale the Kähler part of the, of, so the, the imaginary part of the of this model I, so that means you blow up the, the cycle to, to, to be very large. And uh, well, the, uh, the motivation for looking at this particular point is that most of the uh, bound states will actually disappear. That's similar to the story in equals to, to four. And moreover, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, in special invariance will be invariant under 
uh, on the so-called uh, spectral flow symmetry. So they will be large, they will become uh, periodic under under shifts of this D uh, two brain D uh, two brain charge uh, through some uh, lattice vector that essentially is reflecting the fact that uh, on the D four brain charge you can change the D two brain by tensoring the the gauge bundle then leaves on the on the D four brain by some U uh, one bundle. And so that affects the, uh, the D2 brain as well as the D0 brain charge in this, in this simple way. So thanks to this symmetry, we, uh, we, we can restrict the, uh, the possible uh, D2 brain charges to the discriminant uh, group of this uh, lattice of, uh, of, of charges, of D2 brain charges, such a way that uh, we have only a finite number so, uh, of, of components. So this is the origin of this vector valued uh, property that I was mentioning here. So you can think of, so this object will, uh, for, for fixed PA and the modular symmetry, let me under SL 2 z it will mix for different values of QA modular living in this uh, finite, uh, uh, this finite group. Okay, so, so that, that's, uh, we arrive at this, uh, at this constraints by thinking about uh, this uh, SL2Z uh, uh, isometric action on modelized space. But in fact, it was known or proposed much earlier by Malesina Strominger Witten, who had a different approach to the same problem. They, well, they just uh, pointed out the fact that uh, uh, you can get these D4 brain bound states in M theory by wrapping a five brain on the, on the four cycle. And if you uh, consider the four cycle to be very small, then you're left with a two-dimensional uh, supercomponent field theory. And uh, the, so the generating series of these uh, invariants, once you are multiply them with suitable uh, theta series associated to this uh, uh, spectral flow invariants here, actually have to coincide with the elliptic genus of this uh, superconformal field theory living on the five brain. And uh, that allows to derive that the, these training series have to uh, transform like vector valued uh, modular form of a very specific uh, uh, weight and, and multiplier system. So we are sort of redis we are rediscovering something that was known, but the, this approach has the, has the uh, advantage that it doesn't require uh, uh, to assume that this generalizes is beyond this uh, ample setup, in which case we make contact to a mock modular points. But okay, before I say that, I, I, I just want to mention that, of course, this, this invariance uh, property is very constraining. It means that if you know, uh, if you know the, 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 uh, the singular part of your, of your uh, vector valued modular form, so the so-called polar coefficients corresponding to negative powers of Q, then it determines the vector valued uh, modular form entirely. Well, at least since uh, be, when, the, when the weight is negative, otherwise there could be some additional uh, non-polar uh, constraints. And uh, well, you still have to compute those polar coefficients. That's a, that's a complicated uh, job in general, but at least you can very easily extract the, the growth uh, uh, using the Hardy or the circle method or Hardy Ramanujan Gamara expansion and again, uh, match the prediction from, uh, from the, the black hole entropy. So that was of course understood uh, early on by, by uh, Malacena and, and collaborators. Of course, you must make sure that the, so this depends on the leading polar coefficient being non-zero, you still have to, to show that that's the case. Um, no, it's not holomorphic. It's a Ziegel theta theory, actually. Um, um, yeah. So this, okay, yeah, indeed. So this particular one is is right. Is is a is a holomorphic theta series, um, and um, yeah. So it corresponds to something of of the D two brain charges. But I'm a bit confused between the, there are two kinds of theta series which transforms in, in complex conjugate representations. Um, so I think in this particular case, it's the holomorphic one that, uh, that enters. Yes, uh, to clarify that problem. 
Okay, so then the main question, well, I will come back later to discussing uh, how to compute this, uh, these polar indices for some simple examples of, uh, of Calabria three falls. But for now, uh, let me uh, continue to, with the general story and discuss what happens when this uh, four cycle is no longer uh, irreducible, but uh, can be decomposed into a sum of n components. So in that case, you expect to, to have bound states of uh, D four brains, which can uh, uh, correspond can be right on any of the components of the uh, of this divisor. And indeed, using this uh, so using this kind of constraints, what we what we showed is that it, uh, the generating service will in general be vector valued Mach bundler of certain depth, so depth n minus one correlated to the number of constituents here. Although with the same weight and multiplier system as predicted by the uh, naive uh, analysis. So what the mock modeler uh, uh, means here is that uh, of higher depth means is that there exists some non-holomorphic data series, so non-holomorphic objects, such that this generating series, which is modular, oh, sorry, which is holomorphic but not modular, can be uh, uh, well can be completed by uh, uh, including contributions from all possible um, uh, decompositions of the total charge into, into some of these constituents. So, the, so the, mod, the modular anomaly of this series can be repaired by adding some non-holomorphic contributions, which are determined recursively in terms of generating series for lower D4 brain charge. So such that the whole thing, which is now a function of tau and, and tau bar, uh, transformed as a modular form of, uh, of desired weight. And moreover, so when that's the case, that this series is no longer uh, holomorphic, but it, it satisfies a, uh, an explicit holomorphic anomaly equation, which we could determine uh, in complete generality, which relates the, so the tau bar derivative of this completed series to uh, again the completed series for lower D4 brain charge, including some explicit theta series, uh, again non holomorphic, although a, a slightly different uh, kind of, as, as those ones. So I won't give the complete, you know, the, all the details in constructing these theta series, but just what is the, what is the main tool that we use for, for this construction? Sorry, what is that more accurate? Yeah, so I, so this hat, I mean, uh, is not, this is not the completion of that guy. Those two, those two guys are non-automorphic. Maybe the notation is a bit confusing. They are not the same. Uh, yeah, whereas this H hat guy is the completion of that. Yeah, I mean, notation is a bit confusing. I apologize for that. Okay, so how do we get uh, these modular completions? Uh, well, there is there is a kind of a, a toolbox, or uh, uh, which uh, goes back to a very nice paper by uh, Vineras in in 1978, which gives a way of uh, well a way to think about uh, modularity of a large class of theta series associated to indefinite signature lattices. Uh, so, consider some lattice lambda of signature R d minus R with some quadratic well, with some quadratic form Q of, of uh, indefinite signature R, D minus R, and some kernel function phi on, uh, on RD, uh, satisfying certain uh, decay property. And consider the sum of all possible lattice vectors of a, uh, this function phi evaluated at this lattice vector rescaled by uh, square, two, uh, square root of tau two times uh, this, uh, uh, usual like uh, e to the tau times uh, quadratic, uh, uh, quadratic form uh, factor. So if, uh, if the quadratic form was, was definite, was Euclidean, so positive signature, you could just take this function to be, to be one or polynomial, you would get the convergent theta series, you would be modular. But in general, it's not. It's, uh, and, but in general, it's not unless you choose this kernel function very, very suitably. So uh, what Minera showed is that if, if you impose these two conditions on, on, on phi, well, there is some decay condition that, uh, uh, so, so 
So the product of phi with this quadratic form should uh, not only be L1, but in fact should be L2. Um, remains so if you act with some uh, quadratic polynomial or, or quadratic differential operator. That's the technical condition I want to spend much time on. But there is also a differential equation that, that you need to satisfy. So basically the Laplacian for this indefinite quadratic form plus two pi times the Euler operator, the rescaling operator. Sorry, this is a typo. It should be x d by dx uh, minus a certain uh, real number lambda. So if that equation is satisfied, then this, uh, this theta series uh, will actually be modular. Well, it will be vector valued modular because again, it depends on the, on the choice of vector q in, the, in this discriminant lattice. And basically, the, the idea is simply to ensure that the, that the function is invariant under Fourier transform such that you can apply a Fossil resummation in the same in the Euclidean case. So, an important remark is that if you act, uh, so in general, this theta series will be non holomorphic. There is some explicit uh, tau two uh, dependence here. And if you act with the del by del tau bar, you will remain in this class of, uh, of theta series. With a different kernel function obtained by acting with this Euler operator. So it would be holomorphic if this function phi was uh, homogeneous of some degree. But of course, if it's homogeneous of some degree, and if the quadratic form is indefinite, then this will never be uh, L1. So, so you can't have both uh, uh, convergence and, and holomorphy and modularity. What can I do? <laughs> All right, so uh, there are, let me give uh, a couple of examples where this, uh, this theta series arise. One are, this example are Ziegel, uh, Ziegel theta series, uh, where you just uh, uh, consider phi to, to be the, uh, this Gaussian function where you evaluate uh, x at, uh, so you pick some fixed, uh, I should have said positive plane of dimension r, and, uh, and you evaluate uh, the function phi at the projection of x on that plane. And in that case, you can, you can easily check that the, all the conditions will satisfy, there's the convergence. And then what you get is the usual uh, ziegel narain theta series, which appears a lot in this uh, lifting uh, uh, genus theta lifts constructions. But um, this is, uh, you know, uh, that, <laughs> far from being holomorphic, you can do something which is much closer to being holomorphic. Uh, and the first example of that was given by, by its figures in this very uh, nice uh, thesis, an important thesis. Uh, in the simplest case of uh, signature one comma D minus one, where, so what he showed is that you could, uh, well, it's actually a rephrasing of how he, how he arrived at this result. He didn't rely on, on uh, Vinera's theorem, but anyway, in such a case, you can just pick, if you have uh, two vectors, two, uh, two positive vectors, which have positive in the product, then you can construct this, uh, this difference of error functions uh, of the linear forms uh, B or S, contraction of C and X and C prime on, on X. This, uh, and, and check that this is actually a, an eigenmode a solution of this uh, vinyarized differential operator and also satisfies all the, the decay constraint. Basically, the, so in, as, the, as the summation, as the, the, the vector in your lattice become, becomes large, this uh, error function gets approximated to, to sine functions. So there are difference of sine functions will be non-zero only for, uh, for vectors in the lattice which have uh, a positive quadratic form and therefore the sum converges. If you just took this, uh, this uh, difference of sine functions, so just truncated the sum to this, uh, this cone, uh, then it would converge, but it would not be modular. But uh, basically, the, so this uh, turning the signs into error functions allows to uh, uh, to restore modularity while keeping keeping convergence. So this this uh, both these objects play a very important uh, role in understanding the properties of Riemann and mock theta functions and why they are mock in the in the first place. Now we'll be interested in generalization of that, or we need a generalization of of that uh, for uh, arbitrary signature. So. 
Uh, so this is something which uh, we worked out in, in, uh, in this uh, paper with uh, Sergei Sibashish Banerjee and, and Jan already a few years ago. And basically what we did is to, is to uh, construct uh, a class of solutions of this Vignard equation which have uh, the desired behavior at, uh, at large for large vectors, namely they, they uh, asymptote to, uh, uh, did I write this somewhere? To product of sine functions. So uh, as X, so they are given by a, uh, uh, a formula which generalizes the usual uh, uh, integral representation of the error function. So error function will be integral integrating a Gaussian over a semi-infinite axis. This is integrating a higher dimensional Gaussian over a semi-infinite uh, higher uh, dimensional uh, uh, space. Um, and so, yeah, so, so uh, they said each of them separately is a solution of this Vignard's equation. It's not, uh, it's not suppressed in all directions to be integrable. But you can take again linear combinations of these objects such that uh, you would pick only contributions from um, positive vectors and therefore ensure the convergence. Um, so we did this, uh, yeah, so there was some uh, important generalization by Nazar of, 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 of our work then. I should say that, uh, so this is a very down to earth way of, of finding this non homomorphic test series. But uh, uh, Steve Kudla and Jens Funke had a much more geometric approach to the same problem. They interpreted this construction by, by uh, instead starting from a form-valued uh, indefinite test series the, from uh, Kudla and Nilsson, and then integrating this form value on certain polyhedron in the space of positive planes, and then produce the same, the same object. So, um, there was kind of a brief uh, review of what's the technology that goes behind this uh, this whole uh, uh, well, derivation of this uh, of these constraints. I should mention, yes. Yeah, so for applications to our problem, the lattice that we that we need. So when you have bound states of uh, n components, is uh, so you can always factor out the the the, the common uh, d two brain charge uh, that's using the spectral flow invariance. But you still have to split the D2 brain charge among the various constituents. So as a, as a, as a consequence, the lattice that you have is n minus one copies of the uh, uh, well of the lattice of fluxes on the on the on the divisor, which has signature one comma b2 of x minus one. So you really want to be able to deal with theta series of arbitrary negative uh, negative signature, which we can do using this uh, this results. So the kind of the test series which appeared in the holomorphic anomaly are exactly of the type which I, which I uh, explained with a certain choice of kernel function, which is, so it's a, it's a sum of products of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, generalized errors, error functions. I don't want to go in much detail, but just, uh, uh, so it's, you have to sum over all possible trees with the n possible with uh, n leaves. Consider all, uh, all all such planet trees. For each such tree, there is one factor of error function coming from the vertex, uh, as well as from the from the from the top vertex with arguments that are given by uh, by the data on, on those tree. Don't want really to spend too much time on this. So that, that gives this theta series, uh, which was denoted by theta hat, and that was indeed uh, uh, modular. And the one which I denoted by theta n, which appeared in the modular completion, it was not modular. In fact, the, the whole point is that, maybe I should emphasize, that, should have emphasized that, going back. Yeah, so the, the whole point is that this theta series here is, is not modular, but it's modular anomaly it cancels the one uh, of HP in such a way that the whole thing is modular. And so it's given by a, a, a yeah, somewhat different, what it uses is a somewhat different kind of error functions, which are, well, both error functions and this uh, limit or sign, sign functions, which arise in this, in this way. So you have to replace the, uh, yeah, keep only one part of the error function depending where you sit at the top vertex or or at any of the intermediate vertices. Expand, solve, uh, so this one solves Vinyaras. This one does not solve it. Uh, 
well, locally it solves it, but big, uh, but there are singularities coming from these uh, step functions. In, uh, in uh, so this this is as this is the non uh, yeah non differentiable function. Yeah, yeah. So it, in particular, it fails to obey these conditions on the, you know, being L two integrable once you multiply by differential operators. Thanks. Okay, good. So this is pretty involved, like kind of modular uh, anomaly. Fortunately, it simplifies in some relevant examples, which are when you just have a single uh, divisor. So when b four of x is equal to one. So the only all the D4 brain charges uh, are multiple of uh, of a primitive uh, divisor, so they uh, so the P A is the multiple of some uh, of primitive charge P zero A, and the only uh, splittings that you have to consider are to, are the partitions of N. Um, right. So modular completion involves a sum of all partitions uh, partitions of of N, uh, which is uh, okay. And what's quite kind of uh, uh, remarkable is that if you're interested, if you just look at the holomorphic anomaly equation and uh, you express it in terms of this uh, gen uh, elliptic genus type of, uh, of uh, generalization, uh, so Z, Zn here. Uh, so once again, as you, you put together, you contract this vector valued uh, object modular guy with the uh, suitable uh, theta series. Then uh, the modular anomaly equation takes a very simple form. The tabba derivative is just the sum of all possible splittings of n into n one plus n two of the product of these two of these two series. And uh, well, this was actually uh, first uh, observed in a somewhat different context, namely uh, with an invariance on uh, on on some uh, half k three manifold by uh, uh, this uh, gentleman. So, so in the context of buffer with an invariance, and but uh, our analysis shows, or suggests at least from physical reasoning, that it continues to hold in the much larger class of Calabria with B four equals to equals to one. But the modular completion still involves a sum of a partitions of arbitrary length, so n into sum of of n i's for arbitrary. Length. Okay, so I have uh, fifteen minutes to go. I think I can. Probably co uh, co go quickly over the uh, the Waffa Witten story and then spend more time on the on the new part. So there are kind of two ways of constructing uh, four uh, Calabria three folds which have B four equals to one. One is to consider the the non compact case where and you, so you start from some uh, complex Fano surface S and you consider the canonical bundle over S. That's now a, a Calabria L three, although it's it's uh, it's non-compact. And in that case, the so the the BPS index, so where for n units of d four brain charge, which wrap the the surface. So I should say the d six brain charge has to be zero, otherwise it would be an infinitely massive object. But you can have uh, n units of d four brain charge wrapping uh, the surface, or well, this new should be should be. Q somehow uh, units of uh, of d two brain charge and n of d zero. That is, uh, you can show that it coincides. Uh, so, so this dt invariance coincides with the Waffine with an invariant for a un gauge theory uh, on that surface. So more specifically, it would be given by the Euler number of the modelized space of semisable sheaves of rank n on on S with the with mu. Uh, being the the first chain class and and being the the second second chain class. Well, so this so this Waffa Witten invariants have been uh, have been uh, much studied. Uh, well, it's also cl closely related to the Donaldson invariants that we heard from uh, from Greg's uh, second well third bridge, I suppose. Uh, although they uh, well they are somewhat different, yeah, no, uh, somewhat simpler or much simpler probably. Um, they also have uh, this uh, wall crossing behavior when the so when b two plus of the surface is equal to one, and that's always the case for a complex Fano Fano surface. So you have to determine in which chamber you compute them, and the natural choice is to take the the, the so the, the large volume attractor point that I was mentioning before actually maps to the canonical polarization, where the Keller form on your surface is proportional to the to the canonical case. 
So the prediction then is, uh, is that the generating series of these numbers, again, sum over all n with fixed uh, uh, rank and first term class should be, should be mock modular of depth uh, n minus one. And well, the, you can. There's actually a refinement of those of this of this invariant, so you, there, you can add some this uh, some uh, parameter, uh, keeping track of not only the Euler number but also the Betty numbers, and uh, and, and have uh, some modular state, some some Jacobi type mo uh, mock model property as well. So we know that that's true for n equals to one because in that case, Goethe's formula gives this generating series. Uh, well, it's, you basically have to deal with the whole the Hilbert scheme of points on the surface, endpoints on the surface, and the, the cohomology of those Hilbert schemes is very well known and has this uh, this uh, modular behavior. So, the expectation is very fine. But in fact, it should be true for any n. And well, already back in '94, Waffen and Witten understood that that rank two, the rank two uh, uh, twisted top, uh, n equal to four Young means on 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 P two. Then the, this, uh, all the numbers of instanton molar spaces are, are not modular, but they are uh, mock modular of weight one. They involve these uh, these class numbers. Uh, well, this is relying on work of mathematicians, uh, and already at the time they understood that there had to be an additional monomorphic uh, correction to make it uh, to make it modular. So from this uh, gauge theory point of view, it's now understood where this non-holomorphic correction uh, come from, uh, come from the boundary of space of flat connections. And uh, so double cap, which of Witten have given a physical derivation of, of this term, although I think they only understand this term for, for rank two and higher rank uh, is, is a little bit, uh, uh, well, some work remains to be done. Okay, so you can actually, uh, <laughs> So this is prediction from, from physics, but you can also compute those waffa witten invariants uh, uh, in a mathematically rigorous way, uh, either for P2 or del, any, any del Pezzo surface. In fact, there's, uh, Jan Manshot has, has a sequence of very nice papers where he computes them by a sequence of uh, wall crossing and blow ups, express it in terms of uh, higher, uh, well, generalized uh, apple sums. Uh, there are some very explicit formulas. And then, so you you get the, to predict the uh, uh, mod, so that the, uh, in this from this argument you predict the, the very precise uh, modular anomaly. In fact, you can go the other way around, and uh, knowing this uh, this modular anomaly equations, you can you can produce a solution. And in this way, uh, Sergey as Alexandrov has managed to give a explicit series for uh, waffa witten invariants for any del Pezzo surface at any rank. So it might be interesting for mathematicians to look into these uh, very explicit results. Okay, but uh, now I want to consider a case where we don't really know how yet what these uh, invariants are, and that's the case of compact LBL3. And that's, so uh, part of it is already published and, all the, uh, and, and I'll also try to discuss some new results. Okay, so let's, uh, let's return now to the case of uh, this, uh, D4, D2, D0 state counting on the compact LBL3. So, so the other way to have B4 equals one is to have B2 equals one as well because of Poincaré duality. So let's consider uh, uh, one parameter models which have just one killer modulus and as a result, just one, uh, one divisor. Um, so again, the, the magnetic charge, D4 branch charge is a multiple of this, of this ample divisor. And so the, the self-intersection of this divisor will play an important role, and I'll call it uh, kappa. So that would be five for the quintic. So the quintic is the simplest example, but I'll consider a, a, a bunch of other examples. So the first thing to, to check is, is that when, uh, when you have an ample divisor, so n equals to one, then the generating series of uh, these indices counting one unit of D4 brain charge and some um, yeah, so mu is this is again this D two brain charge, which are sometimes called Q, sometimes called mu, and n is a zero brain charge. That should transform as a vector valued modular form of weight minus three half in a in a precise uh, precisely identified representation of the of the discriminant uh, uh, of the discriminant uh, group. 
And therefore, it uh, will be uniquely determined by the polar coefficients where, uh, where this number n is such that the exponent here is, is, is negative. Now, it, uh, you have to be careful, however, that the, so the dimension of the space of modular forms is usually smaller than the, than the number of polar coefficients. Uh, you, can, uh, you cannot start from any, any such thing, otherwise you would generally get mod modular forms. But for rank one, we just expect uh, vanilla type uh, vector value forms. So this game was played already, uh, I guess, 15 years ago by uh, Gayoto, Strominger, and Yin on a, on a bunch of, of, of models. Uh, and well, they consider the examples which I put in red in this table. So this table is the, is the list of uh, 13 uh, hypergeometric uh, uh, complex intersection Calabria threefolds. So they are one modulus models whose Picard folks are governed by a hypergeometric equation. So we know very well how to compute uh, periods and, uh, and uh, um, gromov witten invariants and, and, and so on. And so far, not so well to, to compute the donald sumter bass invariants, which I'm interested in. Uh, so the notation here is that this, so this is some uh, product of, of, uh, of uh, uh, polynomial equations inside some weighted projective space. It doesn't really matter from what I want to discuss, but the important data is in this last column. N1 is, this, is the number of polar terms, and C1 is the number of constraints that, uh, that is put on, on those terms by modularity. So for the quintic, there are actually no, there are seven polar terms, but no constraint. But the first, one of the first examples arises for this bicubic, where there is actually one constraint on, on 14 coefficients. OK, so how do we determine this, uh, this uh, polar coefficients? Well, uh, physical uh, in, uh, insight or playing with the attractor flow tree formula strongly suggests that these polar coefficients should come from bound states of D6 brain and anti, anti D6 brain. And uh, if that's the case, then you can actually uh, hope to compute them because the, the, so the DT invariants, which count down state of a single D6 brain, an arbitrary number of D2 and D0, is actually computable from gopaku mavafa invariants. There is this so-called GVDT relation due to MNOP, which expresses this, uh, this invariance uh, in terms of the, well, the topological string amplitude, but on that, that part here is entirely determined by, uh, by this gopakuma Vafa invariance. So if you assume this, so for rank one, so D4 brain charge one, if you assume that all polar coefficients will come from bound states of a, of a D6 brain wrapping the full Calabria and an anti D6 also wrapping the full Calabria, but with uh, some uh, minus one unit of uh, D4 brain flux along this divisor, the total thing will have one unit of D4 brain charge. That's uh, what you want to, to, to get here. And then you can distribute the D2 brain charge and the D0 brains on, on each of the two sides. And somehow uh, it appears that the way to do it is to put all of them on one side, let's say on, on the D6 brain uh, side. If you do that, and so you, you use the simple uh, wall crossing formula for two centered bound states, which uh, I just recalled here. So the number of bound states of charge gamma one, gamma two is the product of the indices times this, uh, this uh, Dirac, uh, uh, Dirac product. Then, uh, then you get an explicit formula for, for, the, for this, uh, uh, well, I should put a question mark here. This is really a guess from, from physics uh, in term, for these polar degeneracies in terms of this DT, uh, rank one DT invariants, which are in turn determined in terms of Gopakuma. So amazingly enough, this, uh, this formula reproduces all the polar coefficients that Gaiotto and Yin uh, very ingeniously uh, determined from using entirely different, uh, different considerations. And uh, well, what I did not mention is that, uh, so in these five cases, they did find a, a, a modular uh, vector value solution with the proper uh, polar coefficients and also with integral coefficients. So, of course, integrality is an important constraint, which uh, which, uh, which needs to be to be very fine. To be very fine, it's not implied by modularity, but it's uh, physical. It's what you want to get at the end. So, 
knowing the, the way to do this is, of course, once you know the you know, polar terms, you just have to match it to a linear combination of some uh, suitable basis of the space of vector valued modular forms. I just wrote down the formula for that space, but it's not, uh, it's not that important. So then you can get all of them by hitting some, uh, some, some theta series with some ser derivatives and, 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 and dressing it with powers of e4, e6, and so on. So you do find uh, suitable modular forms in, in all those red examples, but you don't for three examples that were not considered before. So that's, that's, some, that's a fly in the ointment. <laughs> Uh, what you, what's nice is that in a few cases where there were uh, these constraints on polytons from modularity, such as the bicubic and the biquartic, you do find a, a completely satisfying solution. Uh, so that's uh, so that's a good uh, a good mathematical uh, physical guess for this infinite series of DT invariants. Here I, I just uh, showed some explicit examples to to impress you for the quintic and for uh, sextic, ectic. But here's another fly in the ointment, probably the first one is, so if you do it for the, for the degree 10 hypersurface, uh, this is the prediction from this D6, D6 bar ansatz. And it's also the one that the Gayo2 and Yin uh, proposed, but uh, you can actually compute in a different way, uh, this, uh, the polar terms using very recent results by Swala, Facebook and Thomas. And what you find is that this 576 is off, is, is incorrect, should be 575. <laughs> In that case, uh, so it will, so there is a, there exists a, a joining series which has those terms. It will have different uh, sublimit coefficients, but it means that somehow we are lacking some understanding in in the in the, in the polar terms. So I think I have like three or four minutes. Uh, so I'll I'll just say a few words about what are these mathematical results and how we can uh, expect or well, hope to fix those numbers uh, in general of all these kinds of models. So by exploiting wall crossing and vanishing theorems, uh, and so in particular, there's some very deep inequality in the Anderson Thomas theory, which was uh, conjectured uh, uh, by Mac, uh, Toda, Macri, and um, sorry, the name is, escapes me right now. Uh, but so, so you can identify some empty chamber and then use wall crossing for, to determine or to relate. Um, uh, all ranks, so this uh, rank zero DT invariants counting D4, D2, D0 to rank one DT invariants. So they, it means the physics intuition is correct, but actually the, the precise relation is kind of opposite to the way we, we, we uh, think of it physically. It expresses this DT or PT invariants uh, as bound states of, of, of two uh, D4 brains. And so this is uh, somewhat. Uh, somewhat counterintuitive, but it does give rise to some explicit formula for, uh, uh, for, the, um, for the, the counting of D4 brains, which involves the D6 brains with now this kind of Dirac product appearing in the denominator. So I don't really want to uh, discuss further details on this, but it's, it gives an algorithm for uh, uh, computing these polar terms, provided you can compute these DT invariants uh, to arbitrary uh, genus and degree. So that's the main limitation uh, right now. Um, but using uh, so the currently available uh, uh, results on, on Gopakumavafa invariants, as well as some improved versions of this uh, theorem by Soela uh, phase back, we can actually compute the, most of these polar terms and well, confirm the prediction uh, from the naive ansatz, but also uh, determine these order one contributions that were. Uh, necessary for modularity. Okay, so, um, um, okay, let me, let me just uh, skip that. So really this was the warm-up case for considering going beyond what Gayoto Yin had done uh, and consider the, you know, the case of higher number of D4 brains where we have actual mock modularity rather than modularity. And what we showed in the paper with uh, Sergey and Neva and, and Yan that you can actually, uh, actually if you knew the, how to compute the polar terms in those cases, you could actually uh, determine uh, also the, the mock, we gave an algorithm for determining the mock model form that would have these polar terms. I think for lack of, of time, I'll, 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 I'll skip this, uh, this, this story. 
just it, the, the, what's maybe uh, un, uh, surprising or unexpected is that you can do this once you know the Waffa weight and invariance on P2 for any rank, then you can use this technology for, for a compact Arabia uh, three folds. But that would take me uh, too much time to do this. So here's the, uh, here's the quick uh, conclusion. Uh, so the message is that, so they, is that well counting BPS states on Calabria 3 is much richer and also much more complicated than on K3, on K3. The existence of S duality still puts some uh, strong constraints on this invariance, leads to the structure of mock modular forms of, uh, of uh, higher depth. Uh, that means the, 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 the model completion itself involves, involves uh, uh, mock modular forms of, of uh, well, in a recursive way. And in principle, we, if we knew uh, the polar coefficients, we couldn't reconstruct all those invariants, but computing those are, are hard. We don't really understand what, where modularity comes from on the mathematics side. Uh, we, of course, physically, we are quite convinced that it's there. And also the physical origin, or I should say, whatever physics or mathematics origin of these tonalomorphic contributions remains to be, to be, to be clarified. But this mock behavior is important and it affects the growth of Fourier coefficients and therefore the microscopic or supersymmetric black holes should have some uh, imprint on the microscopic side. So I just leave you with the, with the picture of a beautiful bridge uh, that was uh, recently uh, yeah, constructed off, off the coast of, uh, of, of, of Croatia. And hopefully in the future, we'll have a very you know, high travel road between the, the two coasts of uh, mathematics and physics. Right now, it's really not there at that point. But I think there are, there's plenty more to, to uncover here. Okay, thanks a lot. Lars, thank you very much. What a, what a wonderful talk to show us crossing the bridge and, and also indicate that we have a lot more to do. Um, we have uh, time for a couple of questions before lunch. I know people have travel plans, so we'll maybe just have one or two and we can always have more during lunch. Anybody have a question they'd like to ask? Yes, but so the failure you were showing, do you think it's related to the fact that there would be other bound states that would contribute uh, than the D6D6 bar or it's, uh, it has to be something else? So the most likely explanation is, is that you cannot really distribute all the, the D2 and D0 band charge on one D6 or one D6 bar. Maybe you have to allow for further splittings. We tried that, it didn't allow us to get the correct answer, but it may also suggest that you have to, you, there could be contributions from so-called scaling solutions where some of these additional charges would not be bound to any of the two components, but maybe uh, you have to consider three centered objects. At this point, we don't, we don't have really a, a physical understanding. Part of the reason is that these predictions from, from, uh, from mathematics, as I say, they, they kind of come the, the, the wrong way. They, so they cannot be straightforwardly interpreted in the physics, uh, in the physics way, but uh, you know, that's what we want and need to understand. Um, Any more questions? Okay, so uh, let's start by uh, thanking Boris again. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And on behalf of the organizing team, I'd like to thank all the speakers. Their contributions have made this workshop so uh, powerful. So thank you to all the speakers this week. And uh, I'd like to thank the attendees, both here and all the virtual attendees who sometimes been dealing with very difficult um, challenges due to um, time changes in different areas. So uh, thanks to everybody for coming. And it's my great pleasure to thank the Newton Institute, who has been hosting us for this workshop, the workshop before, and our entire program. We're very grateful for their support, and uh, I hope that everybody enjoys a, a good lunch and then uh, safe travel home.